Okay, so today's video is actually a follow-up from the one I did on Tuesday. So if you haven't watched that one, which was titled Getting Comfy with Satan, uh, then just give that a, a watch before this one, otherwise it might not make sense. Um, link's up top there. So let's get into the video. Okay, so if you did watch Tuesday's video, you'll know what that was about. And there was a comment in, in that video um, made by someone who, who had a very, really, a really, really good, good question to ask. Um, and I wanted to actually cover it because uh, it, it is worth um, exploring this a bit more and um, understanding it, explaining it. Um, so the comment reads as follows. I technically understand this, but certainly some spirits are supposed to be the dark side or the bad guys in some way. What is the point of Satan if he is not the bad guy? Why should I get comfy with the bad guys? Okay, so just to reiterate from last week's or Tuesday's video, um, the whole point of that exercise wasn't to become um, a Satanist or follow Satan or become a left-hand path of any kind. Uh, it's about actually finding balance, about finding equilibrium within yourself, within your life, within your magical practice. And the only way to do that really is to understand that there is no black and white, there is no um, dark and light or good and evil. It's 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 all one. Um, the easiest way to look at this is, the typical example would be to look at nature. Nature creates and destroys. It destroys in order to create. So there's that equilibrium, that balance between the two. And it's constantly going on and on and on. Um, same thing with chaos. Chaos, um, you can imagine it as um, a ball of energy. And within that ball of energy, if you look at it from the outside, it's disorder. Uh, it's complete random, just craziness. Um, but if you start to actually look deeper into it, you start to see threads that create order. Um, so you've got this balance of disorder and order, or the balance of creation and destruction. Um, another example would be to look at human beings, uh, people in general. You get your good guys, you get your bad guys. And a person is usually one or the other out of impulse or force. Um, we know we try to be good because if we're not good, people won't like us. Uh, if we're not good, we won't go to heaven, um, you know, and things like that. Or it could be impulse and a person could be labeled a bad person because of these impulses. Or possibly just the way you were actually raised and the way, you know, the influences you had in your life as you were growing up can obviously determine whether you're a bad guy or a good guy. But if you take a single person, let's take a good guy, um, that good guy is going to have a light side and a dark side. And same with a bad guy. They've got the light side and the dark side. With the good guy, quite often the, the dark side is, is suppressed. It's caged. Um, and at some point, it usually comes out. Um, but if you actually really get to know somebody in depth and actually delve into who they really are and their, their soul, then you will find this dark side or the, and this light side. And it's the same with spirits. They have a good side and a bad side. Um, they're not explicitly one or the other. So you don't get your um, good spirits and your bad spirits. In a lot of traditions and paths, they do actually define between the good and bad spirits. Um, in in voodoo, even um, you have your your uh, set of lower who are later known as the good spirits, and your set of lower who are known as the bad spirits. Um, but even there, I mean, you might go to a particular spirit to do a particular thing, but there's still a balance in that spirit. Um, there's still an equilibrium. Uh, if we look in, into Goesha, for instance, um, one that comes to mind is Marbas. Um, now, Marbas can create disease. 
Uh, it's actually, I read, read a long time ago, somebody was actually having a, a discussion or conversation with Marbas, and it came out that he actually created the Black Plague. Um, but he doesn't do it uh, because he wants to do it, or because, you know, he wakes, you know, well, I don't know if spirits actually wake up one day, um, or they sleep or whatever, but um, it's not like he just decided one day that he's going to create the Black Plague. He was asked to create the Black Plague. And, um, but at the same time, Marbas also cures. So he can cure, he can remove diseases from people. Um, so it, it's not the spirit themselves, it's the magician that goes to them and uses them. Okay, so what is the point of Satan if he's not the bad guy? Um, it depends on the practitioner and the person actually viewing it, or viewing the situation, viewing Satan, um, considering Satan as one thing or the other, or whatever it is. In Christianity, um, Satan's the, it's their biggest marketing tool. Um, but to a Satanist, um, Satan would be the All-Father, the one that actually helps them through life and actually uh, creates everything. But now, if you were to take a human being, take yourself, okay, uh, especially if you are a parent. Now, if somebody were to grab you and put you in a cage and threaten you and poke you and burn you and electrocute you, how would you feel? And at the same time, if somebody threatened your child, be just because they are your child, um, how would you feel? How would you react? Now take that and put it into context of a spirit. Of a spirit. So let's take a, a, a spirit from the Guesha. Now you usually find when people speak about um, doing some kind of evocation work and it ends up being negative, they get thrown around the room um, or some kind of attack happens to them and it, it's been known people have been thrown around the room from doing a, an evocation of a Goesha spirit. Um, in those cases what you'll probably find and what you usually find is that the practitioner is using or is a cer ceremonial magician who's using um, the old grimoires and the, the methods that are very archaic and very Christian dominated. So in those methods you literally cage the spirit. You, you contain it in the triangle of art in the form of a cage. You trap it. Okay? And then what you do is you start to threaten it. Um, because you have the power of God and therefore the spirit must kneel down before you and do whatever you say. And after you've threatened it, then you tell it what, what you want it to do and you tell it that if it doesn't do it, you're going to burn it, you're going to... You just end up threatening it more and more and more. And so, I mean, <laughs> the Goesha spirits are ancient. Um, they're a lot more powerful than you, you or me. So to actually trap a Goesha spirit and then start threatening it, um, how do you think it's going to react? So if it gets out of the cage, it's going to start throwing you around the room. Uh, this, is why, this is why I actually like demonolatry, um, because demonolatry actually brings the respect of the spirits into play. Uh, there is no threatening. If you do use a triangle of art in demonology and you do use a circle, then it's not as a trap. It's merely to contain the energy of the spirit so that it can actually manifest. Um, so the usage of the triangle, again, even just, not just the spirits, but the tools you use. In one case, the, the, the triangle of art is used to trap and threaten. And in another situation where you have respect for the spirit, the triangle of art is used just to contain 
the energy so that it, it, it's got one place instead of the energy being spread around the entire temple. It's contained in one space so it's more concentrated and therefore can manifest easier. So even your tools have got double usage, good and bad. So it really does depend on how you view the spirits, how you treat the spirits. And that's the kind of reaction you're going to get. If we take Satan uh, in context of your child being threatened just because they are your child, it's the same situation. How are you going to react if your child is threatened? You're going to retaliate. You're going to attack, right? Same thing with Satan. When his children get threatened just because they are followers of him, he's going to attack. What do you think is going to happen? So, you know, it's, it's not about good or bad. Satan's, Satan, Lucifer, Belial, uh, Baal, all of the Goetia spirits, they're not want good or bad, they are both. And it depends how you treat them, how you use them in your magic, and how you react to them, and, and if, if you have respect or you don't have respect. So Satan and Co. are not the bad guys, they are just spirits. Um, same with nature being just nature, and magic just being magic. Um, so this whole, the whole point of this is that we can be good or we can be bad, or we can actually become what magic is and what nature is. And that's how we should be following our own path um, and bringing those aspects into our life in general, bringing them into our magical practice and bringing that equilibrium into ourselves so that we become more balanced. So we balance all the elements within ourselves um, and we balance that, um, the shift of, of from good to bad or white to white to black or you know so that we're not we don't have a scale that's doing this or that's doing this and then all of a sudden it tips back again there's actually a very good um, example in the Kabbalion um, regarding hermetic um, principles uh, if I remember correctly it's been a while since I read this you might want to actually read the Kabbalion by the three initiates it's very good um, they speak of a pendulum. So you have a pendulum that's going back and forth and it's swinging this way and that way quite severely. But as we start to come into equilibrium, it starts to, you know, slow down and the, the chaos that it, it or, you know, the, the general chaos that it creates of swinging so rapidly actually starts to calm down in ourselves, in our lives. And then eventually the pendulum stops moving. And that's where we find the equilibrium. And there's no chaos. Same thing can be said in, as an example. Um, if we look into traditional witchcraft and uh, Old Dame Fate. Old Dame Fate is said to be the center. And everything spins around Old Dame Fate. So we are spinning around Old Dame Fate. And our, our purpose is to, to, be, to, or to have union with Old Dame Fate. And in order to do that, we need to get to the center. And as we're going around the outside, it's that spinning. If you can get it, if you get on to, onto a merry-go-round, you remember those old merry-go-rounds when we were kids in the parks? Um, just those small things um, where you, you stand on and you push and it would go round and round and round. If you get a few people on the merry-go-round and you actually stand on the outside, then you'll feel the pull. But if you move towards the center, that motion just starts to disappear. So it's the same thing with Old Dame Fate. And we're spinning around and around and around. And as we get closer to the center, that motion starts to disintegrate, it starts to disappear. And as we get to the center, we become still. Um, so it's the same thing as that union, the equilibrium um, that we're seeking in order to actually get or we'll get to the center, get to all day and fate, get to God, get to the all, get to the great architect, the mind, whatever you want to call it.
sorry, Netflix decided it wanted to tell us all about the latest series. Um, so that, that, that's actually really it. Um, obviously, I, I mean, I could go on for hours and hours about this topic. Um, but I just want to try and get to the main point so that it becomes understandable and I don't start rub, rambling on about um, abstract things and just confuse the hell out of everybody. So I'm going to make that it for today. Um, I hope that answers um, the question that was asked. Uh, I hope it clears it up a bit more. Um, if it doesn't, just ask again and we'll, I'll, uh, I'll reply in comments. Unfortunately, I, I actually wrote a very long reply in, to that comment and for some reason it disappeared. Um, so that's why I thought I'd, I'd just make a video plus I can explain a bit more in the video. And uh, okay, so I'm going to leave that with you today and have a brilliant weekend and I'll see you next week. Cheers.